Welcome back and in this video I want to talk in general about application layer firewalls, also known as layer 7 firewalls, named after the layer of the OSI model that they operate at. Now I want to keep this video pretty generic and talk about how AWS implement this within their product set in a separate video, so let's just jump in and get started. Now before I talk about the high level architecture and features of layer 7 firewalls, let's quickly refresh our knowledge of layer 3, 4 and 5. So we start with a layer 3 and 4 firewall which is helping to secure the Catagram application. Now this is accessed by millions of people globally because it's that amazing. Now, because this is layer 3 and 4, the firewall sees packets and segments, IP addresses and ports. It sees two flows of communications, requests from the laptop to the server, and then responses from the server back to the laptop. Because this firewall is limited to layer 3 and 4 only, these are viewed as separate and unrelated. You need to think of these as different streams of data, request and response, even though they're part of the same communication from a human perspective. Now if we enhance the firewall, this time adding session capability, then the same communication between the laptop and server can be viewed as one. The firewall understands that the request and the response are part of the same session, and this small difference both reduces the admin overhead, so one rule instead of two, but this also lets you implement more contextual security, where you can think of response traffic in the context context that it's response to an original request and treat that differently than traffic in the same direction which is not a response. Now this next point is really important. In both cases these firewalls don't understand anything above the layer at which they operate. The top firewall operates at layer 3 and 4, so it understands layers 1, 2, 3 and 4. The bottom firewall does this plus layer 5. Now what this means is that both of them can see IP addresses, ports, flags, and the bottom one can do all of this, and additionally, it can understand sessions. Neither of them, though, can understand the data which flows over the top of this. They have no visibility into layer 7, for example, HTTP. So they can't see headers or any of the other data that's been transferred over HTTP. To them, the layer 7 stuff is opaque. A cat image is the same as a dog image is the same as some malware. And this is a significant limitation. And it exposes the things that we're protecting to a wide range of attacks. Now, layer 7 firewalls fix many of these limitations. So let's take a look at how. Let's consider the same architecture where we have a client on the left and then a server or application on the right that we're trying to protect. In the middle we have a layer 7 firewall and so that you'll remember it's a layer 7 firewall, let's add a robot, a smart robot. With this firewall we still have the same flow of packets and segments, and a layer 7 firewall can understand all of the lower layers, but it adds additional capabilities. Let's consider this example where the Catagram application is connected using a HTTPS connection, so encrypted HTTP, and HTTP is the layer 7 protocol. The first important thing to realise is that layer 7 firewalls understand various layer 7 protocols, and the example we're stepping through is HTTP. So they understand how that protocol transfers data, its architecture, headers, data, hosts, all of the things which happen at layer 7 or below. It also means that it can identify normal or abnormal elements of a layer 7 connection, which means it can protect against various protocol specific attacks or weaknesses. In this example, so a HTTPS connection to the Catagram server, the HTTPS connection would be terminated on the layer 7 firewall. So while the client thinks that it's connecting to the server, the HTTPS tunnel would be stripped away, leaving just HTTP, which it could analyze as it transits through the firewall. 
So a new HTTPS connection will be created between the Layer 7 firewall and the backend server. So from the server and client perspective, this process is occurring transparently. The crucial part of this is that between the original HTTPS connection and the new HTTPS connection, the Layer 7 firewall sees an unencrypted HTTP connection. So this is plain text, and because the firewall understands the Layer 7 protocol, it can see and understand everything about this protocol stream. Data at Layer 7 can be inspected, blocked, replaced, or tagged, and this might be protecting against adult content, spam, off-topic content, or even malware. So in this example, you might be looking to protect the integrity of the Catagram application. You'll logically allow cat pictures, but might be less okay with doggos. You might draw a line and not allow other animals. Sheep, for example, might be considered spam. Maybe you're pretty open and inclusive and only block truly dangerous content such as malware and other exploits. Because you can see and understand one or more application protocols, you can be very granular in how you allow or block content. You can even replace content, so if adult images flow through, these can be replaced with a nice kitten picture or other baby animals. You can even block specific applications such as Facebook, and even block the flow of business data leaving the organisation onto services such as Dropbox. The key thing to understand is that a Layer 7 firewall keeps all of the Layer 3, 4 and 5 features, but can react to Layer 7 elements. This includes things like DNS names which are used, the rate of flow, so how many connections per second, you can even react to content or headers, whatever elements are contained in that specific Layer 7 protocol which the firewall understands. Now some Layer 7 firewalls only understand HTTP, some understand SMTP, which is the protocol used for email delivery. The limit is only based on what the firewall software supports. Now that's everything that I wanted to cover at a high level. Coming up in future videos, I'm going to be covering how AWS implements Layer 7 firewall capability into its product set. For now though, this high level understanding is what I wanted to help with in this video. So go ahead and complete the video. Thanks for watching and when you're ready, I look forward to you joining me in the next.